Greetings, treasure seekers! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Actually, I haven't changed this shirt since we've started doing this show. I think I'll do that now. Excuse me a sec. There we go. Nice new Hawaiian shirt. Seriously, I've got a whole wardrobe of these. Anyway, in these severe economic times, I'm sure we'd all like to be a little bit richer. You, me, everyone. We're all looking for our little piece of El Dorado. Except, of course, that I have one. Of course, I'm referring to today's subject, the road to El Dorado. Released in 2000, The Road to El Dorado is the tale of Tulio and Miguel, two Spanish tricksters and their accidental discovery of the lost city of gold. As one of DreamWorks Studios' animated movies, it's virtually unknown today, and cruelly underrated in my opinion, but we'll get to that later. So saddle up amigos, we're on the road to El Dorado! Our story begins in a back alley, as we meet our heroes, Tulio and Miguel. They roll for a map to El Dorado. But oh dear. Tulio's dice are weighted, and Miguel is blamed. After a quick-witted mock duel, the two make their escape, straight into the path of a bull. Our heroes escape into two barrels of water. But these barrels are loaded onto the ship of Hernan Cortez. Spanish conquistador. Catholic zealot. Receiver of cursed gold that... Oh no, hang on. Never mind that last part. Wrong movie. <laughs> Consigned to the brig, our heroes scheme to make their escape. And we meet our third protagonist, Altibo the horse. Wait. How does a horse know what a keys are, anyway? The pair make their getaway, but Altibo won't be denied. And so the now trio make their way across the oceans. The tiny rowboat washes up on the shores of the new world. And so our heroes set about the task of finding the lost city. In montage, no less. Which we're skipping because reasons. But all they find is a waterfall and a stone tablet. They begin to set off for home. But life is never that simple. This is Chell, our final protagonist, whose only wish is to see the outside world. Sounds familiar. Our now quartet, enter the Golden City. Colorado. And our two tricksters are promptly mistaken for gods. And as one good turn deserves another, Miguel and Tulio convince Zekelkan to spare Chell's life. Release her! Behind closed curtains, Chell explains that she wants in, but Miguel and Tulio are wary. Although, they still go through with a full musical number, which again, we're skipping because reasons. All the more reason to check this movie out for yourself. Go on, I'm doing you a solid here, man. The next morning, High Priest Zekel Khan proposes sacrifice. But Tulio and Miguel are not convinced. Though when the chieftain offers lashings of gold instead, they are more receptive. But on the coast, the conquistadors have landed. The gods make demand for a boat, which will take about three days to build. While they wait, Miguel goes wandering across the city and discovers what is being done in his name. Take the day off. Wouldn't that just be the best excuse ever for taking a city? Oh, sorry, boss, I can't come into work today. My god appeared to me in a vision and told me to take the day off. You'd never get away with it, though. Miguel engages in a friendly game with the children. But this leads to our two gods being challenged in an exhibition hoop ball match. And so the gods cheat their way to victory. But Miguel has had enough. Miguel doesn't like all this human sacrifice or staying on high. He's much more of a god of the people. A democratic religion? Oh, if only. But Zekel Khan is far from defeated. Zekel Khan sacrifices people because he believes that the gods are cruel and brutal 
demanding of blood because they don't bleed themselves. And he noticed that Miguel got a cut from that hoop ball match. And while the next few days pass without incident, the chieftain lets slip that he sees through the con. Luckily for our heroes, he doesn't care. I mean, they did rid him of that turbulent priest after all. But in the temple, Sekul Khan prepares his terrible revenge. The beast pursues our pair through fire and brimstone. Then Sekul Khan confronts them. Which is a great way to clear the air between Miguel, who is starting to like El Dorado, and Tulio, who's focused on the plan. And once again, the con is on. But there's a small detail they've missed. And while a giant magically controlled stone jaguar is hardly a small detail, it does send Zekel Khan to his apparent doom. But oh dear, Zekel Khan survived, and just look who's found him! Tulio and Chell prepare to leave for Spain. But oh dear! Tulio improvises to stop Cortez from finding El Dorado. The plan is simple. Destroy the gateway behind the waterfall that hides El Dorado by collapsing the pillars that support it. But the pillar breaks too fast, and Miguel decides to make the save. Nah, just kidding. Our quick-witted quartet make it out alive, but there's still the little matter of Zekel Khan who is swiftly discredited when Cortez discovers a rock wall where the gateway should be. And so our movie ends with Tulio, Miguel, Chell and Altivo riding off to new adventures. So that was the road to El Dorado. And you know what? I'm going to put this into the House of Love. This movie is criminally underrated. It's smart, Funny, heartrending, and above all, traditionally animated, at least for the better part. Sure, you could say that the romance is hokey and plot contrivances abound. This is a comedy adventure, in the vein of the classic road movies, considering some of the studio's later releases, and their propensity for sequel after sequel. I think that it's about time that this forgotten classic gets its sequel. So thanks for watching, and join me next week for more fun and frolics. Adios!